students. Okay, and uh, actually in the regular classes we have discussed about uh, uh, amplitude modulation, uh, generation, and demodulation, as well as the mass calculations. And in the fifth year, probably we have discussed about the uh, FM uh, generation. What is meant by FM, and uh, what is the uh, different techniques for generation of the FM? And in the sixth unit, totally it is concentrating on uh, FM demodulation. Uh, okay, in the FM demodulation, we have uh, te different techniques, and we'll discuss about FM demodulation, as well as uh, we'll discuss about uh, FM transmitters and receivers, like uh, AM. Okay, we'll discuss about the same thing, like uh, separator in principle, and everything is there even for FM. But some additional uh, components are there. And uh, in addition to that, we'll uh, discuss about uh, noise calculations even in the FM. And uh, we'll start with the topic uh, in the 16 in FM demodulation, and there is a frequency discriminator. So, unit 6 is uh, FM demodulators. So, in general, demodulation means demodulation or detection means recovering modulating signal from modulated signal. So, here uh, modulating signal means we are all familiar with the low frequency signal, modulated means high frequency. So, in simple sense, we can assume demodulation means it's a conversion of high frequency to low frequency or getting back modulating signal from modulated signal. But uh, for FM modulation or uh, related to the frequency modulation, we have to recover modulating signal from frequency variations. Frequency variations. So, here the process is from frequency variations, we have to get back or recover modulating signal. This is the actual theme. But implementation of this process is a little bit difficult. Frequency variations, uh, from frequency variations, recovering the modulating signal. So, here the approach for FMD modulator is frequency variations are converted into amplitude variations. Amplitude variations. And amplitude variations are, or from amplitude variations, we can recover modulating signal. So, instead of directly converting frequency variation to recovering the modulating signal, we'll follow this approach. So, now how we will uh, make uh, recover uh, modulating signal from amplitude variation? We are all very much familiar. Envelope detector is the method. With this, we can make amplitude variations, and from that, we can uh, recover the modulating signal. Now, which uh, circuit or which component is used to make frequency variation into amplitude variations? The best one is a resonant circuit or tank circuit. Resonant circuit or tank circuit. And uh, here uh, we'll discuss about uh, the block diagram related to this process. So here uh, the main uh, thing is uh, I'll assume you know, resonant circuit or the input signal is a FM modulated signal. So here input is FM, FM wave or modulated signal. FM wave is connected to the uh, tank circuit or resonant circuit, resonant circuit. Okay, and here this resonant circuit will convert frequency variations into both frequency and amplitude variations. And we'll use the envelope detector. Envelope detector. That is the recovered modulating signal. So now, how this resonance circuit will convert frequency modulated wave into frequency and amplitude wave. So we know that frequency modulated wave, okay, and according to the FM representation, it is a T. So here, the amplitude of the FM wave, that remains constant. 0, A of C, minus A of C. At 0, it is a sinusoidal signal. And as the frequency increases, time period decreases, or it is a very close representation. And after that, again the representation. And after that, the wave form is like this. And again, we'll get back to the carrier. This is FM wave. So that means here the modulating signal that varies according to the representation. In terms of the frequency it is FC. It is FC plus delta F. Again F sub, F sub XC. FC minus delta F. 
and again f sub x c. So now what how the resonance output will make this conversion from frequency variations into frequency and amplitude variations. So here the resonance output and the resonance output that can be described by <coughs> the resonant curve like this. It is a frequency and it is a amplitude. So if we apply the input or FM wave as a frequency component then automatically there is a variation in the signal. So for example if you are tuned to the frequency it is a f suffix c and it is a f suffix c plus delta f and this is a f suffix c minus delta f. So now this is a frequency variation for example if the input signal frequency is f suffix c then the corresponding amplitude is a a suffix c for example. If the input of the if the input signal frequency is fc plus delta f then it is a ac1 and fc minus delta f it is a ac2 so corresponding to the every frequency there is a variation in the amplitude so now the output of the resonance circuit that can be represented as it is a time now the output of the circuit and this is a resonance circuit and this is a representation and here we will get the waveform <coughs> now the amplitude is not fixed earlier for FM wave amplitude is a fixed now the amplitude that varies similar to the AM wave here it is a combined frequency and amplitude variations and we will get the representation like this and if the amplitude is a very high value and we will get the very low time period or high frequency after that we will get the waveform like this So here this is FM wave with the resonance circuit it will convert frequency variations into both frequency and amplitude variations. From this we will use the envelope detector to get back our recovered signal. The same block diagram in a circuit diagram that can be represented as that can be represented as so input is the FM wave FM wave and now it is applied to the tune or tank circuit. And after that we know the envelope detector uh, arrangement like diode, resistor and capacitor and it is a demodulated signal. Block is a tank circuit and uh, here uh, the remaining is an envelope detector which you are already familiar in the AM demodulation envelope detector and this circuit is also called frequency discriminator so here this total process in the by frequency discrimination frequency discriminator is the conversion of a uh, modulated signal or frequency variations into amplitude variation amplitude variations into recovering the modulating signal but the main drawback with this total process is the dynamic range of the uh, resonance circuit so here because uh, its a uh, slope is a very limited one slope is a limited one so obviously it can uh, work on the frequency range fc minus delta f to fc plus delta f which is a very limited dynamic range dynamic range and um, it is not suitable for uh, um, large frequency variations and that's why here uh, this problem that can be overcome with the next topic it is a balanced uh, frequency discriminator balanced frequency discriminator means uh, here it is possible to extend uh, uh, dynamic range in the um, frequency discriminator we identified the drawback is a limited dynamic range that means it can cover only uh, a small frequency range and uh, to overcome this problem we can we use the balanced frequency discriminator <coughs> okay and here this process is uh, uh, more or less same as that of uh, uh, rectifier concept like uh, center tapped uh, a full wave rectifier so here we will use the two blocks which are connected uh, and uh, with that we can extend uh, the dynamic range for frequency conversion 
so here the process for uh, <coughs> extending the dynamic range is referred as balanced frequency discriminator balanced frequency discriminator so here uh, instead of giving the block diagram or uh, circuit diagram directly i will explain the basic concept so here uh, i will use the resonant circuit like this frequency and either by taking uh, this slope or this slope it is a very limited one so that's why here this is the one resonant frequency f or one i will take another resonant frequency like this which is less than the earlier one and i will make this part into negative part like uh, the representation by combining these two now the slope that is extended now the dynamic range for this uh, uh, free balanced frequency discriminator is even greater compared to the previous one so now we have to set the frequencies in such a way that it is a carrier frequency it is a fc plus delta f and uh, uh, this is a fc minus delta f compared to the earlier case okay now this slope and this slope are connected in series and uh, we can extend the dynamic range that is the basic concept for the balance of disc uh, frequency discriminator and uh, the basic concept of uh, uh, frequency variations into amplitude variations amplitude variations into uh, amplitude from the amplitude variations getting back to the uh, modulating signal this total process is common but extending the dynamic range that is a basic concept and this uh, balance of frequency discriminator is also called foster sealer discriminator in our examination they may ask the question explain about foster sealer discriminator and don't assume it's a very new topic and uh, we are not discussing about this one balance of frequency discriminator or foster sealer discriminator both are same so now the circuit diagram for this process block diagram wise there is no difference this is the circuit diagram for uh, balance of frequency discriminator as uh, we discussed for extension of the dynamic range there is a requirement of two tuner circuits one is the tuner to fr1 and the one is tuner to fr2 and inverted representation so here uh, the inverted representation with the lower and it is tuner to fr2 upper uh, part is meant for uh, first resonant circuit or first resonant curve tuner to fr1 and this total part is meant for first tuner circuit which is tuner to fr1 and it which makes the conversion from frequency variation to amplitude variations whenever the input frequency is related to fr1 and after this frequency and amplitude variations are converted uh, frequency variations are converted to amplitude variations and those amplitude variations are useful to recover the modulating signal whenever the frequency modulated wave consists frequency near to fr2 then the lower uh, part is activated and uh, with that the corresponding frequency variations are converted to amplitude variation those amplitude variations are useful to recover the modulating signal so here this total with this total process whenever there is a variation in the frequency from fc to fc plus uh, okay fc to fc plus uh, delta f then the top tuner circuit is activated and with this we are able to recover the modulating signal whenever the input signal frequency is fc minus delta f then automatically lower part is activated because lower part of the center tap is the inverted version obviously it is in the negative side and uh, the corresponding frequency variations are converted into amplitude variations and were able to recover the modulating signal so here this tuner circuit means it gives the amplitude response according to the input frequency which part activated that depends upon the input frequency the input frequency is f sub c obviously the top part is activated if it is uh, increasing in the direction fc plus delta f then automatically top part is activated if it is in the decreasing part decreasing mode then lower part is activated so finally it is useful to extend the dynamic range of uh, the frequency to amplitude conversions